Hey guys, what's going on? We're back. Um, and yeah, from the video that I did about a few days ago, just informing everyone, especially first time competitors about, um, you know, some truth about competition prep and things you're gonna go through, some risks, some, some health problems and uh, emotional problems, all these different things. I also wanna talk about uh, life after competition, you know, what, what you're also gonna, you're probably gonna go through um, once that diet comes to an end and once you step off stage or even if you're just doing it for a photo shoot like, like I do a lot and um, that transition that is, you know, tough sometimes. Um, and again, it's, these things don't happen to everyone but I'd say about 95% of the people who have already competed or have done photo shoots or dieted hard to get into great shape, 95% of them have gone through most of these things that I'll talk about. You have those 5% of people who just are really great after a diet or after a prep. I've had clients like that as well. And um, I've, de I've developed myself into that person too. Um, and they're just like, you know, that's it, the end of the prep, I'm good. Uh, Monday, I'm right back to normal, nutrition, training, all that stuff. But I'm convinced to become that 5% it's, it's just from years of experience and learning and trial and error and uh, stuff like that. I'm convinced that you don't go through your first competition and then you're all of a sudden already that person. Uh, I think it takes time and development and uh, learning about yourself through the process and then making those mistakes during the prep and then after the prep to learn from those mistakes so you you become that person who is, who's perfectly able to transition from case okay, so the stage is done, the competition is done, the photo shoot is done, whatever, and you go right back to normal life. You know how to make that transition. I think that takes time and development. I don't think that happens right out of the gate. So uh, a few things that you're gonna run into post-competition or after you know a harsh diet or something that, that's just, that you've been dieting for just to look in great shape. You know, um, some things you're gonna run into in, is Number one is definitely going to be some irritab irritability, um, and you're just you're just going to feel off. Uh, and I'm talking from experience, you know. I've been competing and doing diets, countless photo shoots. I've, I've I can't even count uh, how many preps I've done, like eight, twelve, sixteen weeks. How many I've done, but um, for some reason, right afterwards, again, until you develop into that five percent of people who are just good, it takes time to get there, but. Usually afterwards, you just feel off. You don't feel like yourself. Kind of how we described during the competition phase. You just get irritable. You get snappy. You know, your, your temper takes over you. You kind of, you, you're just not who you were before you started the prep. And that continues after the prep is over as well. And for some people, it, it takes like, you know, two weeks after getting sufficient amount of calories and starting just to live a normal life um you know maybe it takes just a few weekends going out with friends and being back to just talking with them and having some good food able to have a glass of wine or beer or something uh, social gatherings for some people it takes longer um it sometimes it takes three four months before you finally feel like all right i'm i'm done with with how i with how i feel right now like you know you could be the nicest person and then during the prep and then once it's over you're you're still just like a dick and you don't know why uh and that's what's kind of scary about you know going through that that transitioning phase but that's something you're gonna have to deal with and the irritability my suggestion for that is just when you feel those times coming on where like you know say you snapped at your spouse or your mom or your friends or whatever and then you get to a point when you're by yourself and you're just like why did I just tr why did I just treat my mom like that? Like she didn't even do anything to me, you know? Or why why did I just get so freaking snappy at, you know, my friend? Like they're my best friend. Like they didn't even do anything to me. What what the hell is going on? When you get to that point of, you know, kind of where, where you feel like your anger and your temper is like gonna take over and you're gonna get re really, like, uh, quick quick tempered at them and snappy, you know? Just think about it in your mind. Um, get yourself away from that situation, whatever it is. Um, you know, go meditate or read a book or um, go for a drive and listen to some audio books to get you in a better place. Uh, go do something fun or, 
you know, just get yourself away from that environment until that those little episodes are just out because eventually they will make their, themselves out. Um, usually it has a lot to do with your hormones too. Uh, after a competition is through, we'll talk about that. But um, just get yourself away from that situation, uh, whatever it is, um, or just be like, or just be honest about it, whoever you're talking with or wherever you are. Just be honest about it. And be like, hey, you know, I really don't feel too good right now. I'm a little stressed out. I'm just gonna take a, I'm gonna take a walk, or I'm, you know, I'll talk to you later or something. Just get yourself away, and then and then develop ways on how to, you know, how to get back to just that that peaceful or whatever type of person you are. Get back to that because it's it, the transition is tough. And the second thing, you know, you might, I don't even want to say might. You probably will. But again, you have that five percent of people who, I, honestly, I think they went through it anyway. Um, it's just just a ter just bad relationship with food, uh, just eating disorders, and it's tough because bodybuilding and dieting and all this stuff it it can inevitably lead to eating disorders and just you know binge eating and, and just terrible relationships with foods because you go just months on end um, depriving yourself and restricting yourself and overreaching and overtraining and eating the same thing every day. And then all of a sudden after your competition or even leading up to the competition, all you could think about is food. Um, people, I've, I've seen it so many times and I, I've went through it. You know, like I said, I think I mentioned my other video, but uh, for my first competition, that those next seven days following my competition, I didn't work out. I didn't do any cardio. I, I must have, I don't even know how much I ate. I ate hundreds of thousands of calories in, in those seven days you know and i gained 15 pounds in one week because i had I, I knew how to diet and be disciplined and all this stuff to get on stage and look my best but there was my first competition no one told me how hard it was afterwards and in my opinion dieting and prepping and getting in great shape it's tough you know not a lot of people can do it which is why our fitness community and competitors and stuff is a very small percentage of the population not many people can do it it's tough but the real work comes after the competition and trying to transition into just being a healthy, normal person again. Um, and people just, they'll plan, they'll plan like days or weeks before their competition what they're going to eat. They'll go to the store a couple days before the, the competition, have a list of all this junk food that they want. They'll buy everything. Their, their shelves will be stocked with food. And... I mean, you, you are just preparing to get fat that next week. You are preparing, you know, all these we, and again, I've went through it. I, I've done those things. Um, and that's why I'm saying now I'm, I, I'm, I'm not that person, but I've done them. I've, you know, I, I had to learn from that. I did that my first competition, my second competition, the year later, you know, I tried getting better and better, but it's tough. You have a lot of people. I've had clients as well. They just like, fuck, man. Like, the, I can't even control myself. Like, with eating, after all this stuff is said and done, when you have all this dis like discipline is not the problem. You have all this. You have a ton of discipline to go 12, 16, 24, 30 weeks, however long you've been dieting. You have a ton of discipline to follow everything you're supposed to do and get in great shape and then compete. You have the discipline. But there's something afterwards that you, you just can't control yourself. And that, that's your body's response internally that kind of just takes over and your mind is just not strong enough. Um, so binge eating and, and eating disorders is, um, you know, it may be inevitable for you, you know. So, um, and again, that happened for my first couple years because I was really following just, just a bad way of dieting, you know. Um, just eating the same things, same type of just fish and asparagus and broccoli and all this stuff. And that's why eventually, you know, two years ago, I came across flexible dieting and macros. If you guys haven't seen my ebook, please visit the site and grab it. I'm getting great responses from it already. I'm really appreciative of everybody who, who, who has gotten it. Um, but I've got, I got into that way. And flexible dieting, it, it absolutely helps create a better relationship with food because if, if your calories are still are still sufficient you know diet you could you could fit some some little things in there like i showed you guys in my current day of macros meals you know i fit a pop tart in there and different stuff like that some sweets that i create fit them in there and i'm still achieving my goal of how i want to look however 
I will say flexible dieting and macros is not for everyone because there are certain people who have these trigger foods. So if you, I, I've had people tell me that they don't want to follow macros. Hey, I need you just to tell me like, you know, this, what to eat. I can't have like junk food in my meal plan. I just, I end up eating, you know, I can't just have a, a you know, two ounces of chips. I, I'll eat the whole bag. I, I can't do it. So flexible dieting macros isn't for everyone. So don't feel like if you don't respond to macros and flexible dieting, you're like weird or something. That's not true at all. Uh, it's not for everyone. However, what I've found and with most of my clients now is that flexible dieting macros and stuff like that puts you in a great position post post diet and post competition, post photo shoot, you know, whatever you were getting ready for, puts you in a great position because you are you don't feel like binging or anything like that because you've been able to have the food you want leading up to the prep and that's why it's so successful. Um, but I will say if if you know if you have a short amount of period of time to lose body fat and get in shape for that competition, photo shoot, whatever your goal is, um, you know, you're eating 120 grams of carbs a day, there's not much flexibility in there. You know, you're not gonna fit you're gonna be sticking to veggies and you know sweet potatoes and some oatmeal. You know, it's just you you just have to because there's not much flexibility in there. Um, so, but I will say that for binging, the eating disorders and all that stuff, um, flexi flexible dieting has helped me tremendously with that. Uh, and many, many people who I've now coached through that, through that method. And I will also touch on the binge eating thing is that it's also a mental thing where you, th you have this goal of where you want to be 12, 16, 24 weeks from now. And that goal is, that means so much to you to get in shape and, and it means so much to you by that date to do whatever necessary. But you see that goal as the end goal. And so then once you hit that goal, oh, now I don't have to just weigh my food or now I can just eat whatever I want afterwards and now I don't have to do cardio every day and now I can just take it easy. You have, you have a terrible mindset looking at the stage or the photo shoot or the goal, whatever, as the end. And you cannot look at it like that. You're setting yourself up for failure after that. You need to go right back to what you know how to do. I'll give you what, what I usually do and what, what Bev and I usually do is after, uh, say it was a competition, that night we'll go out to eat, you know, we'll enjoy ourselves. We've developed, we've transitioned into the people where we don't stuff our face and get so overly full because it's so uncomfortable. We've done, I've done it too many times. Um, where I, ju I just ruined my night because I just feel so uncomfortable. I can't even move, you know, I got freaking gas all night. I come close to like throwing up because I mean, these are the first couple of years of competing, what, what I've gone through and what I've learned. Uh, you just, you get back to that mindset and you think about how you felt and all this stuff. And you just realize it's not worth it anymore. So we should just go out to eat, enjoy ourselves, maybe have an appetizer, dinner, and some dessert. The next morning, usually we go out to breakfast Again, I'll have what I want, free meal, maybe some pancakes, eggs, bacon. But then the rest of that Sunday is usually healthy meals. Um, and then when Monday comes back around, we start our reverse diet plan. Um, and we start getting right back on track. The, the calories usually go up a little bit. Um, but we're right back to working out. We're right back to weighing our food, right back to eating how we were before. And that's because that, that photo shoot and stuff, that, that's not the end goal. It's a goal. But then I also have a goal of, okay, three months from now, I only wanna be five, 10 pounds over whatever I was the morning of my photo shoot. These are, these are, these are things you need, to, you need to start having. You need to have goals set afterwards. Uh, for my clients and I, you know, the reason that they're so successful post-competition now um, is because a week before they get on stage, I'm already devising the reverse dieting plan. And I'm already telling you, hey, listen, you know, that night after the competition or whatever, have your meals Sunday, have some fun, have some healthy meals though. Monday, these are your macros. This is, this is what you should be getting back on. And again, as a coach, you can only give them the blueprint. You know, we don't, we don't do much. We give you guidance, we give you the blueprint. It's up to you to execute it. So it's not the coach's fault if all of a sudden they're, you know, someone they coach two weeks later is 20 pounds overweight. That's not the coach's fault. Unless they didn't give that person a blueprint and plan on how to get out of that competition thought process and how to transition, how to, if they didn't do that, then, you know, I do blame the coaches for that. But if you did your, if you did your due diligence and, and you're saying, Hey, this is what we're doing after the competition. Okay. This is what you should be doing. And they don't follow it. You know, that's their fault, but you can't look at that competition and photo shoot and 12 week diet. Like that's the end, you know, just have that as a goal, 
have a goal three months later, uh, have a goal six months later. Um, and, and that'll get you in the thought process of this isn't the end. This is just the little goal I have along my way of, of being fit and healthy and stuff like that. And then another, another problem would just, like I mentioned kind of before, is just the hormonal, um, you're just off hormonally with your hormones and stuff like that. You know, severe caloric restriction and deprivation, it, it, it makes your hormones go all out of whack. Like I touched in, um, in the previous video about uh, prep and stuff like that. You know, even after the competition, you know, girls, you may not get your period for a few weeks. Months afterwards, guys, it may take you a few weeks or months to, you know, feel regular again or get that libido up and your sex drive up and stuff like that. And it has a lot to do with just the body fat percentage. You know, when the body fat gets low, uh, those hormones just, phew, they plummet. And um, the key right there is, like I mentioned before, is reverse dieting. It's, it's getting those fats back up. Usually the fats are very low as well as the carbs leading into that, you know, photo shoot or competition or whatever. Um, it's, it's getting those fats back up. It's getting the calories back up. And it's getting that body fat to now a healthier level. You know, for women, usually it's because they're lean that they don't have, that they don't menstruate, they don't get their periods. And you see it all the time with, you know, Olympic gymnasts. Those girls sometimes go years without getting their period. Uh, and obviously I don't have the data or anything like that, but I mean, I can't see that as healthy. You know, that's a nature's thing for you guys to, you know, to have that every month. So my goal is if that ever happens is to always get you right back on a higher fat um, intake immediately uh, after the competition, start reverse dieting and get that, get everything back in check uh, to get that body fat back up. You know, and, and that's another reason why you get that irritability and stuff. The body fat goes down, your serotonin levels just, just plummet. Everything in your, the brain, your chemicals, they just, they're all out of whack and, you know, your leptin is severely down, which makes gaining weight, uh, gaining fat much, much easier after the competition. Uh, and another, the, the key to that is just getting back on plan, increasing calories strategically, slowly, and still eating the right foods. And the last thing I'll touch on really quickly about that healthy place is uh, you know, the body dysmorphia and the mental and emotional problems that prepping and stuff lead you into after the competition is done. You know, after, after you eat that night or the next day and then you wake up and you, got like, you gain like five pounds of water and you gain some fat, and you look in the mirror and you're like, what just happened? You, you, you immediately just hate what you look like because every morning leading up to the competition, you're waking up more dry and lean and you're seeing everything more and then the day of the competition you wake up looking amazing the best you've ever looked hopefully and you need to get into the mindset that you're not going to look like that every day get into the mindset that how you look on stage how you look the day of the photo shoot just be like this is this is the last day i'm going to look this good because being in that shape and that type of look is not healthy the things we do to attain that look the deprivation, the restriction, the overtraining, the overreaching, you know, the depletion, all this stuff, it's not healthy long term. So you need to get into a mindset where it's okay if, if you gain five or 10 pounds. Be, be comfortable in your own skin where if you were 130 for the competition, you're 140, you still feel like you look amazing. And, and that's all about just an internal and personal mental thing. Don't, don't wake up and be like, oh my God, I'm so fat already. Even though you're only like five pounds over what you were on stage, you know, come to the place where, again, you're not going to be ripped year round. It's not, understand, it's not healthy anyway. And it's hard to make progress that way. Uh, body fat ha has a big, big influence on the hormone production like we touched on. And those hormones contribute to muscle growth. You need a level of body fat to start gaining muscle again, start gaining strength. You're not going to be lean and ripped year round, so you need to just come to come to a comfortable place where you know what. If I gain five or ten pounds, I'm okay with that, you know. And again, that should be the goal. Like we were talking about reverse dieting, three months from now, I only want to be ten pounds over where I'm at right now, you know. And then you execute the goal, you know. You you keep increasing calories steadily and you know strategically, slowly. You taper down the cardio. You start strength training again instead of you know, the higher rep or high, you know, 12 to 15, you start strength training, you know, you have six reps, eight reps, heavy weight, you get back into that. And you understand that having a little layer of fat covering your abs and the veins in your abs and all this other stuff is okay and that it's needed. It, it, it's needed. It's not like, oh my God, now I'm, you know, not attractive anymore. I mean, if you think you're, you're just attractive when you're in competition shape, like that lean and ripped, that's just a personal battle that you got to deal with yourself. I mean, honestly, I could care less if I, 
if I don't have like ripped abs. If I'm like, for instance, getting to the competition, I was 193 this morning. I have the photo shoot in about five days Tuesday. I'll probably be around 190, which is what I feel I look best at. I still look and I, I still think I look great and I still think I'm, you know, fit and healthy and I'm confident and I'm still the person I am, you know, right now at 220. You know, it, that doesn't change just because of my weight if I have some more body fat on me, you know. Uh, and you need to get to that place too. Uh, and again, it took me years. It really did. I started bodybuilding and dieting because I wanted to look good. And that was it. I thought I would only look good and be attractive and stuff like that if I was lean. So I did what was needed to diet and all this stuff to get in shape. But then I had no idea how to just maintain a healthy relationship with myself and with food and all this stuff. And over the past like, like six years, you know, since I was 18, I've been competing, dieting, prepping, coming off of the prep, transitioning, making mistakes, making errors, failing. But all of those things led me to this point where now after the photo shoot Tuesday and then we have, a, uh, we have a couple more Wednesday, Bev and I, after that we'll probably go out to eat Wednesday night, do what we usually do, have some dinner, have some dessert, wake up the next morning depending on what's going on, um, maybe go out to breakfast, then we're right back on. We already got our reverse diet macros set. We already have um, a strength training program set. Um, I pretty much know what we're gonna do with cardio and how we're gonna taper it and stuff. We have the plan set and then we're just gonna execute the plan and it's gonna be like nothing. And again, it took me years to get there. So don't be discouraged if you just did your first competition, you're like 30 pounds overweight. <laughs> you know, get back to eating healthy, get back to the relationship with food that, that you had before that if, if it was healthy, you know, get back to a healthy relationship with food, get back to a healthy relationship with yourself and understand that some of these things you're probably gonna deal with after after your first competition or your diet or prep. And I'm not just gonna say first competition. I, I, I've dealt with them for years after my first competition. It may take you years, um, but I hope some of the methods and stuff that I'm giving you now um, is gonna help you along that road to transitioning in a more healthy way. And um, believe me, you'll get there. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, like it share it, subscribe to our channel, and um, comment below. Let us know what you want to see next, and uh, we'll stay up to date with you guys. We're coming up on, like I said, the photo shoot's next week, about five days away. Uh, I'm going to video our depletion workout. I'm going to take you through um, probably the two days before the photo shoot so you can see what we do with carbs and our food and the workouts and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be fun, so uh, keep a lookout for all those. And as always, visit our site. It's coming up on uh, New Year's is right around the corner and I already have some people um, reserving spots for group training. Uh, I don't know, I didn't do any posts about my group training program yet. Uh, it's up there but it's not active. We're actually launching, launching it January 1st um, and it's gonna be amazing. It's something totally new that I've never done before and I'm really looking forward to it. Instead of just all my one-on-one -on -one clients, I'm also doing group stuff now. So visit our site, check out the page, read about it, uh, check out what's included in it, how we're gonna go about it, and it's gonna be fun. So as always, take care and God bless you. Man, you guys are crazy, dude.